Today we're going to put what we learned last time, how to measure the correlation between assets to full use. I'm going to show you the results of a correlation study I've undertaken across 40 different assets. From these results, I've constructed a correlation heat map. This enables a macroeconomic viewpoint onto the way that the different tradable components of the economy are interrelated. And importantly for traders, it provides crucial information to inform the combination of assets you might want to trade in your portfolio, but also those combinations you should avoid due to the correlation being too high. Stay tuned. In this study, I chose 40 different assets from three different asset classes, currency pairs, stock indices, and commodities. I then measured the correlation between each and every combination of these 40 to produce a correlation heat map. This gives valuable information that can inform which assets it's beneficial to trade together in a portfolio and which combinations should be avoided. Get this wrong, and you might find yourself trading highly correlated assets together, which will significantly increase the risk on your portfolio. So let's take a look at the results. So the technique that I've used here is exactly the same as I explained in the previous episode. I've looked at two different assets, each in turn, calculated the delta in the price over a set period, and in this case, that's one hour. And I've done that for every hour in the last three years. And by doing this, you can then study whether two assets move in the same direction, more than they move in a different direction, and therefore ascertain the correlation between them. So the precise method I've used is what's called the coefficient of determination, also known as R squared. And this is just the square of the correlation coefficient. And so it treats negative correlations in the same way as it treats positive correlations. Because as we've seen from previous episodes, both of those are equally important. So let me just explain what we're looking at in this heat map. Across the top here, we firstly have a set of currency pairs followed by a number of stock indices. And then finally, at the end here, we've got four commodities. So this is gold, silver, oil, and natural gas. Then down the left-hand side, we've got exactly the same assets. So for example, this value you see me highlighting here is the R squared value indicating the level of correlation between Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, and Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. This cell that you see here is the correlation between the Dow Jones Industrial Average and Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. Now, down the diagonal line that you see here, this is obviously one in every instance because it's simply measuring the correlation between the same asset. And as you know, a value of one always represents a perfect correlation and a value of zero represents no correlation. And so I've then color coded this heat map so that values of one will be red, values of zero would be dark green, and then you've got various shades in between. So let's now pick out some highlights of the information that this heat map is telling us. So this value here, is of particular interest. This is a correlation of 0.74, which is relatively high. And if we look at the two currency pairs that have resulted in this correlation, it's the Kiwi Japanese Yen and the Aussie Dollar Japanese Yen. So firstly, they both have a common currency, which is of course the Yen, and that will be leading to some level of correlation in the movement of these pairs. But also, because the Kiwi dollar and the Aussie dollar often move in sync, this then increases the correlation to give us this high value. And so what this is telling us is that these would not be good candidates to trade in a portfolio. 
because in all likelihood, if you had trades open in both of these assets, they'd be moving in the same direction the majority of the time. And so when those trades were going against you, this would effectively double the amount of drawdown. And that's why correlated assets increase the risk of your portfolio. Let's now choose a particularly low value, such as this one. So here, this value of 0.001 represents a very low correlation. And this is between Euro Swiss and Pound CAD. And so because there's no common currency here at all, this gives these two pairs a lot more flexibility to behave independently of each other, which of course then leads to that low correlation value. And so these two currency pairs might make ideal components as part of your portfolio, but of course only if you have a strategy that works on both of those. And the reason for this of course is that because that correlation value is so low, and the two assets are moving independently of each other, it means that when one is in a drawdown, there's a good chance that the other asset will be making profits. And of course, it's that interaction between the two that can reduce your overall drawdowns and therefore risk. Let's now move over to the section around stock indices. And here we can see that there aren't any combinations with the Forex pairs that produce very high levels of correlation. They're all either green, yellow, or orange. And this, of course, is one of the benefits of having multiple asset classes in your portfolio. Now, you'll see by looking down the columns here that there are some, such as the Aussie 200, which appears to be less correlated with the Forex pairs than some of the other stock indices. And so again, if you can have a trading strategy that works on this stock index, then that might be a good one to target if you are also trading Forex. But now let's move down to this section here. So this is showing what the correlation is between different stock indices within that asset class. And as you can see, this is a completely different story. Here, the majority of these are either red or pink, showing that there's extremely high correlation between these individual assets. So some of the extreme values here are, for example, the S&P 500 against the Dow Jones has extremely high correlation. Another one that stands out is this one here, which is the French CAC versus the Euro Stocks 50. And so both of these examples are probably best avoided trading them at the same time in the same portfolio. Whereas there are some, for example, the Spanish 35 index and the Tech 100, which show much lower correlation. So you'd have to make a judgment call as to whether you could trade two indices such as this in the same portfolio or not. So let's now move across and take a look at the commodities. Now, the first thing you notice here is the correlation values for natural gas. And these are all incredibly low. And what that tells you is that natural gas would be an excellent component because of this really low correlation across the board. Whereas if you compare that to oil, which is this column here, it is a significantly different story. There is still some low correlation with certain Forex pairs, but the correlation with others and also with stock indices is all of a medium level. Again, you can see that gold tends to be relatively uncorrelated with the stock indices and many of the Forex pairs, but take a look down here. This value indicates the correlation between gold and silver. And so out of all of the commodities, these are the highest values, which shows that the value of gold and silver changes in sync more often than it doesn't. So hopefully the results of this study have given you an idea of how different tradable components behave together, what their interrelated behavior is. And we've measured that using the coefficient of determination which gives us a level of the correlation. But were you aware that there are other types of correlation that you also need to take account of when you're deciding how to build your portfolio? All we've looked at here are assets. 
But in the next episode, I'm going to take a look at how correlation plays a part across different time frames. And it's just as important to get this right in order to maintain that lower level of risk in your portfolio. So if that episode's already available, then you'll see it top right now. If not, then please remember to subscribe to the channel. And now until next time, trade safe.